showing you today is uh, Xnet DMZ um, VNF setup configuration, which Jim showed it to you in a, a high-level um, slide, right? The high-level slide showing you multi-tenant deployed on a CSP. So what I will be doing is I'll show you, um, zoom into one of those service chains, just walk you through instantiation of it through NSO and and, uh, and all of the steps required to configure that service chain. So I'll walk you through all of that. Um, also, I have Imtiaz um, Ahmed who helped me with build this. So he's all part of the panelists. So you can ask uh, any questions you want and he'll be able to answer some of those um, as part of Q&A. Anyway, so let me just kind of dive right into it. So um, this is how we have the, the lab set up. Um, so if you look at uh, the top layer, we have the management layer in which we have portal, um, NSO running, and then we have two resource managers. One is the info blocks uh, for IP address management, and then we have a, a VLAN resource manager which is built inside NSO. Um, that we will be getting the VLAN pools from. Then in the middle layer, we have um, CSP. In CSP, as you can see, we have two physical interfaces, one northbound, which is for the management data traffic from the VNF, and that's how NSO connects to the VNF. And then southbound on CSP box, we have uh, a, a physical dedicated NIC or a port channel um, configured so that the traffic can traverse from the CSR um, southbound to the physical Nexus 9K switches on which we create work to provide end-to-end uh, -end segmentation. Um, if I, so this slide, I, I wanna share with you the logical uh, view of this whole uh, service chain. So the first thing we do is we spin up uh, CSR and ASA and connect them together through a private bridge. And uh, once we spin them up, then we configure appropriate verbs on the Nexus 9000 along with uh, the appropriate IP addresses. So what we have done is we have allocated a, a specific VLAN pools for inside and outside VLAN as well as the uh, IP addressing for inside and outside network. And I'll kind of show you that quickly as well. So let me just hop on to NSO uh, GUI and just spin up this uh, service chain quickly. And I'll do this through NSO GUI. So let's say if we have a partner um, as Pepsi in our extranet DMZ that we want to configure the service chain for, so I'll just configure this partner. And here are some of the parameters that our service will require for this uh, partner to be onboarded onto the environment. First thing is what we select is the CSP. And here we have two different type of VPNs, um, and it can consist of different sort of uh, VNF types. So in our case, we will select a VPN2, um, and VPN2 consists of uh, a v uh, virtual ASC and CSR, and the one, the picture that I was showing you. And then what we also collect here is the partner network segment, right? So this is the, the, the segment that the partner is connecting from, and we'll use this information to open up any security uh, rules onto the physical firewalls or create routing towards the, the partner segment. So that is all the information we collect, right? These four parameters uh, from the service, and just after collecting that, we can click on commit, and then NSO in the back end will go through the following steps, right, in order to uh, configure these VNFs and bring up the whole service chain. So um, we have something called day minus one here, which in which we, NSO is pretty much gathering resources, uh, such as VLAN management IP from the info blocks, and, um, and it's modifying the day zero configuration file, uploading it back into CSP, and uh, once it's uploaded that file, then it goes in and spins up a VNF by associating appropriate QCAL images, uh, a time.
applying uh, virtual NICs to the VNF so to plumb all the uh, uh, service stitching and uh, we create a private bridge. It uh, applies the day zero configuration and spins up the VNF. So once the VNF comes up, it basically in the back end keeps tracking the VNF using port 22. So it just um, makes sure that, uh, you know, one, as soon as the VNF comes up, it then tries to uh, connect to it via SSH. Once uh, um, it's up, uh, NSO then adds the device into its database and applies the day one configuration to the VNS along with on Nexus 9000, what I showed you earlier. Um, and then once that, that has been configured, the day one configuration has been applied, then it moves on to day two configuration and open up any firewall rules on the physical ASA box. Okay, so let me go back into And these are some of the logs that I was, I was just wanted to splash here quickly is to show you that how NSO is trying to connect to the the following VNFs um, uh, using the IP addresses. Now in my CSP, uh, currently as you can see from, and this screen has been opened from before, and as you can see we have no uh, core memory, none of this is completely empty CSP, right, with no services on it. So let me just refresh my, Screen. So now you can see that we are starting to utilize some of the uh, the resources in CSP, and then as you can see here, we have configured uh, Pepsi ASA and Pepsi CSR, and then we append the names uh, of the service to the appropriate VNF so that it can we can the operations team can easily troubleshoot this in the um, in the future. Um, just to quickly show you what we have configured, so we have associated with appropriate two cow images, and, and Jim walked through some of this, so I'm not going to walk through each line item here, but just, just wanted to highlight that part of this plumbing, we basically created three VNIX here with uh, uh, using uh, Word IO, and then we associated each VNIC, right? The first interface, as you can see here, this is the management interface. Um, then we tie both of them together uh, using a private bridge called Pepsi, right? And this bridge is also named with the appropriate service name um, so that it can be, uh, you know, easy for operations to troubleshoot. And then the, and these, uh, the last VNIC here is for the outside interface, and then you can see that we're creating VLAN 500 and 700 for that. Right, um, just to quickly show you our info blocks, and info blocks, we have assigned uh, the appropriate IP addresses to the VNS, as well as, and as you can see, we have different pools created here, internal, external, so this is for the inside interface, outside interface, from here we're getting a slash 29 IP addresses um, as well. So let me log in and show you how easy it is for me to quickly connect to the console. And if some of you are familiar with how painful that task is when you're running just KVM directly. So um, using CSP, it makes it very simple, right? So you can just quickly log into it and see where what the VNS status is at this point. So as you can see, the ASA just came up. And it has applied the day one configuration on it. Um, we have appended the name, um, the host name of this ASA. And at this point, it has applied the day one configuration on it. It's, if, if we look at this, we have the management IP along with the IP addresses for the other interfaces as well. Let me see where my CSA, uh, CSR is. CSR normally takes about a few minutes to, to spin up. So in the meantime, it, it is, while it's trying to connect to CSR, let me just show you one more thing. So in our day, in our repository, we have um, the appropriate QCOW images stored. So we have the QCOW image for ASA and CSR, as well as uh, some day zero configuration. Um, so day zero config, this one is for ASA and this is for CSR. So when we are orchestrating this, we are modifying these 
day zero configuration um, on the fly, and then we're SCPing back into the CSP box. And from here, we attach it to the appropriate VNF and, and spin up the VNF. Okay, so. So now the CSR just came up. And it has the specific configuration on it. We're going through the boot process. So you can see the OSPF adjacency has been formed with the CSR and it's in full uh, neighbor relationship. So this pretty much gives you a high level overview. And uh, one more thing, if we do have a little bit of time, maybe I can show you something else as well that uh, it, uh, what we've also done here is that we've configured the Nexus 9000. So what we've done here, part of this configuration, we've enabled the features for HSRP and VLAN, configured the appropriate VLANs. You can see here that this is the new VLAN that was just created for Pepsi DMZ and Pepsi Partners. So those are the two appropriate works. Um, for both side of the inside and outside of the service chain. Um, then at the same time, what we have also done is we've created these two SVI interfaces, uh, 500 and 700 for it, attached it to the appropriate work, configured the IP address on it, as well as the HSRP. So it makes it highly available in that sense where um, now the uh, VNF um, outside traffic has two paths, right? So, and it, it attaches to the appropriate uh, um, uh, uh, HSRP web and for this provides a little bit of redundancy. Anyways, that this concludes my demo. So.